Explosion of the Union Carbide. Clouds of toxic gas. Burned the eyes of the world's victims. worst industrial design. December 3rd, 1984. While most people slept, a leak at Union Carbide's pesticide plant in Bhopal, India, released a cloud of lethal methyl isocyanate over the city. Some 2,000 people died immediately, and another 8,000 died later. Health officials, not informed about chemicals at the factory, were completely unprepared for the tragedy. Half a million workers, half a million die every year because of exposure to toxic agents in their workplace. That has got to end, and it can end. The 2005 disaster at British Petroleum's Texas City refinery in the US was considered the nation's worst industrial disaster in 15 years. A series of explosions occurred when a distillation tower flooded with hydrocarbons. 15 died and another 180 people were injured. We know very little of the chemicals that we use daily and surround our lives. For example, in the European market, there are about 100,000 chemicals, and we only have some information about the health and environmental impacts of about 25,000 of them. Most of the palladium for the production of catalytic converters comes from Siberia and is refined at Norilsk, a city at the edge of the Arctic Circle. According to the Blacksmith Institute, it is the biggest single source of sulfur dioxide pollution on the planet. Sulfur dioxide makes acid rain, and for hundreds of kilometers round Norilsk, the trees are dead because of the acid fallout. Up until now, the world has been witnessing the following situation. The industry releases a product in the market, without an obligation to explain what its effects on human health and the environment are. And only after a lot of damage, and many years of damages, and many deaths, too many deaths, were we able to get those products banned. The International Labour Organization estimates that there are around 270 million chemical-related occupational accidents and 160 million work-related diseases each year among a global workforce of 2.8 billion people. In 2007, a new European regulation for chemicals called REACH came into force. Its aim is to prioritize substances subject to regulation in order to limit those considered dangerous to human health or to the environment. But of the 30,000 chemicals in common use, so far only seven have been placed on the danger list. If you have a workforce that is aware of the dangers involved, that knows how to minimize risk and encourage procedures that are less damaging, then you have a workforce that can lead a radical change for the positive. The flower industry in East Africa is a heavy use of pesticides that can affect workers' health. Industry giants like Kiliflora employ over 1,000 people to satisfy the constant European demand for roses. We have witnessed the shifting of flower cultivation from Europe into Africa, and this is due to the environment, low labor costs, less uh, regulations, so a lot of people have moved their, their production to Africa. Trade unions fought for the reduction of pesticides using the guidelines and codes set up by the Global Pesticide Project, created in 1995 to reduce pesticide use and exposure to chemicals of workers in the region through a process of negotiation between governments, trade unions and employers. Two years ago, Kiliflora decided to join the fair trade certification process. In return for better conditions and for the workers and sounder environmental practices, Kiliflora gets to charge a premium for its roses that is used to improve the welfare of the workers. We have managed to set up various committees like the Health Committee and the Women's Committee, which have been looking into various issues in the farm. The employees have also undergone various trainings, like health and education, among other things. Kiliflora is setting a good example to the others because the first thing is to change the mindset of producers. And I think in that we have, Kiliflora mindset has changed quite a lot. It's not 100% perfect, but they're setting an example for the rest of the producers in Tanzania and all over East Africa. Around 170,000 agricultural workers die in the workplace accidents every year, according to the International Labour Organization, a rate double that of other activities. 
It is estimated that 40,000 agricultural workers die from exposure to pesticides annually, the majority of them in tropical regions. The lessons of the Global Pesticide Project are now being applied in West Africa. A meeting of trade union leaders in Cotonou, Benin, is drawing up guidelines that can be put into practice in the field. Il fallait une expérience de petite taille d'abord. We need to experiment on a small scale from the beginning. So what we did is start to implement the project standards in orchards. We observed that very soon the farmers realized that it was very important to transform their means of production. Next to the airport in the middle of the city, greens are blooming, growers are changing agricultural practices starting by replacing chemical fertilizers with organic compost created from the household waste of the city. Local unions further train the owners of these small urban plots who then spread the new practices around the country. We are here not only to vindicate workers' rights, but also to educate the workers themselves. Workers must understand that if they continue with bad agricultural practices, not only will it affect their health, but it will also affect the environment as well. In Togo, the banana industry has had an infamous reputation for pesticide use. But now trade unions are leading the change towards safer and greener practices. It's very important for every farm to do this because these chemicals, if the chemical enters you, it takes maybe longer years, five, ten years later, maybe you are no more with the company and you just go and die and nobody takes care of you. So it's better for you to take precaution from now until it's too bad. Volta River Estates is now going a step further, turning over half of its plantation land to the production of organic bananas, free from chemical pesticides and fertilizers. It's already the most profitable market for the company, evidence that working towards a world less dependent on chemicals is possible. We need to work towards a green chemistry. A chemical industry that rather than use processes that leave behind lots of toxic residues and products hard to assimilate by nature, works instead by copying natural processes that leave less residues behind and no toxic residues which cannot be absorbed by natural cycles. In Australia, a small company, Plantic, is creating plastic from totally biodegradable cornstarch rather than oil, and it already counts industry giants like Cadbury's amongst its clients. We started pretty much from nothing in 2003. Our technology is global, so we would see um, Plantic being involved into a whole range of applications, and I guess it would grow, um, the employee numbers would grow as we grow our business. Brenda Morris believes a sound environmental approach to industry is possible. Plantix plastic even dissolves in water, but pressure from consumers is essential to make the leap. The landscape and what we as a consumer want um, in terms of environmental uh, performance is what drives change. For the United Nations Environment Programme, a green chemistry makes sense to everyone if and when all the costs of current production models are considered. We lived under the impression that there was no real cost to pollution, there was no real cost to damming rivers and drying up river basins. Um, we only looked at the benefits and not at the cost curve. What economics is now providing us with and also the data we have and the empirical evidence is simply the ability to say we have to take all costs and benefits into account and surprise, surprise, we may take very different decisions in light of having the full knowledge of what these decisions are. As much as 95% of the mercury used to recover the gold ends up in the environment, that mercury represents 30% of all mercury emitted in the global environment according to the UN Industrial Development.